President Park Geun-hye attended an event commemorating the 50th anniversary of bilateral ties with Japan. She said both nations should unload their heavy burden of history. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe also attended a commemorative event, saying that he would like to open a new future with Korea. And North Korea has decided not to participate at the Summer Universiad in Gwangju, slated for next month, taking issue with the opening of a UN human rights office in Seoul. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Tuesday, June 23rd. I'm Luke Clary. The South Korean and Japanese heads of state on Monday attended events held in both countries to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the normalization of bilateral ties. President Park Geun-hye said that both nations should unload their heavy burden of history. President Park Geun-hye attended an event organized by the Japanese embassy to Korea to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the normalization of bilateral diplomatic ties. President Park stressed that this year presented both nations with a historic opportunity to move toward their future. 새로운 협력과 공영의 미래를 향해 함께 나아갈 수 있는 전환점으로 만들어야 하며 이것은 후세에 대한 우리의 책무이기도 합니다. Park called for separating the two nations' historic disputes from economic cooperation and other forms of exchanges. 과거사의 무거운 짐을 화해와 상생의 마음으로 내려놓을 수 있도록 만들어 나가는 것이 중요합니다. 올해는 한일 양국이 새로운 미래를 함께 열어 나가는 원년이 될 것입니다. Earlier, President Park met with the Japanese Prime Minister's envoy Hukushiro Nukaga, who also heads the Japan-Korea Parliamentarians Union, and stressed the importance of accurate historic perception. Nukaga responded by saying that Japan's politicians will work toward reaching a consensus between the two countries regarding the issue of Japan's wartime sex slavery. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that he would like to open a new future with Korea, calling it Japan's most important neighbor, at the 50th anniversary ceremony of diplomatic ties between Korea and Japan. He also reiterated his hopes for improved cooperation with President Park Geun-hye. The reception for the 50th anniversary of Korea-Japan diplomatic relations began with a performance of Korean traditional music. Notable figures from all areas of Japan, including three former Japanese prime ministers and four incumbent cabinet members, took part in the celebration. Prime Minister Abe first stressed the importance of Korea-Japan ties by talking about the past roles his family played in normalizing bilateral relations. Abe said that the human exchange, economic cooperation, and cultural interaction carried out over the past 50 years are precious joint assets, and presented a slogan for the 50th anniversary, let's open a new future together. Abe also stressed security cooperation, saying that strengthened trilateral cooperation between Korea, the U.S. and Japan is crucial to maintain peace and security in both countries. He further added that Korea is Japan's most important neighboring country, indirectly referring to his hope for a meeting with President Park Geun-hye. North Korea has decided not to participate in the summer universiade in Gwangju slated for next month. The communist state took issue with the opening of a UN human rights office in Seoul. Back in April, a North Korean delegation attended a preliminary meeting on this year's summer universiade to be hosted by South Korea. The delegation also participated in the group drawing and discussed lighting the torch on Pekdu Mountain. But recently, the North sent a notification saying it would not participate in the summer universiad. 
In its email sent to the organizing committee on June 19th, the North explained its decision by saying that the South had ruined inter-Korean relations by opening the Seoul office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. 한반도 평화에 기여하기를 그렇게 갈망하고 있는 어, 저희 조직위로서는 다시 한번 안타깝고 유감스러운 마음을 금할 길 없습니다. With the North Korean handball and women's soccer teams not participating in the games, the University at Organizing Committee will have to reorganize the groups for these events. The North's decision also dashed hopes of thawing icy inter-Korean relations with sports exchanges. Vegetable harvests have fallen dramatically compared to previous years due to the severe drought of late, driving up their prices for an extended period of time. Since the supply of vegetables is likely to run short for some time, the government has put forth an emergency produce supply plan. Shoppers these days hesitate to buy even a head of cabbage or a bundle of garlic. <laughs> An unprecedented drought and unseasonal heat waves have driven up the prices of onions by 155 percent, cabbages by 76 percent, and radishes by 75 percent from the previous year. Recent rain has helped relieve the dry spell in some places. But 17 cities and counties around the country are still seeing their crops wilt under the blazing sun. Consequently, supplies of cabbages and radishes produced in high altitudes are expected to shrink by as much as 21 percent until September. A 41,000 ton shortage of garlic is also projected, so produce prices are likely to keep increasing for some time. In response, the government has decided to import onions at a low tariff rate earlier than planned. The government also purchased and reserved 8,000 tons of cabbages and radishes and plans to sell 900 tons of cabbages to agricultural co-op stores around the country at half price. Crimes caused by people with anger management problems seem to be getting more frequent lately. Shooting steel balls at a following car because its headlights were too bright or setting someone's car on fire because it was parked in the wrong place. These are just a few examples. Cars speed down a highway at nighttime. A passenger car that's running ahead on the adjacent lane slows down, and all of a sudden the rear window of the victim's car shatters with a loud sound. The window was broken with steel balls. The car that was in front slowed down in order to shoot steel balls through the driver's window using a slingshot. Police apprehended the culprit a 47-year-old man surnamed Cho by analyzing surveillance camera footage. They also seized his slingshot and over a thousand steel balls. Cho said he shot the steel balls because the headlights on the victim's car were too bright. A man in the parking lot of an apartment building staggers past parked cars late at night. A few moments later, something explodes behind him. The flames burned down an imported car and charred a car next to it. The man said he set the car ablaze because the way it was double parked angered him. Both culprits have been indicted for property damage and arson, respectively. Police have apprehended a car thief who installed a GPS locator in a used automobile with intent to track down the car and steal it. Now, what's more shocking in this story is that the thief turned out to be the salesman who sold the car. A man is seen loitering near a building. He drives away in a car as if it belongs to him, when in fact, it doesn't. <laughs> Upon receiving a report from the car's owner, police caught the car thief after a chase. Shockingly, the thief turned out to be a 32-year-old man surnamed Tang who had sold the car 15 days earlier. There was a location tracker inside the car installed by Tang. 
he had put it in before he sold the car with the intent of stealing it back. The car was a stolen one to begin with, so he thought the buyer wouldn't be able to report the theft to the police even after it was stolen back. 이와 같은 피해를 예방하기 위해서는 인터넷으로 차량을 구매하더라도 반드시 정상적인 이전 절차를 거친 후에, 후에 본인 차량으로 운행을 해야 됩니다. Police have arrested Tang on the charge of special larceny and requested an arrest warrant for his accomplice, surnamed Pat. Osteoporosis patients are vulnerable to bone fractures and even gentle shocks can be dangerous for them. But get this, there's a higher risk of broken bones during summer than winter when roads are frozen and slippery. Here's why. This man missed a step and fell down while descending a mountain, sustaining a fracture in his vertebra. With the front part collapsed, the bone of the spinal column, which is supposed to be shaped like a quadrilateral, now looks like a wedge. The number of osteoporosis patients experiencing bone fractures jumps about 4% between May and July compared to the winter season of December to February. This is because the elderly engage in more outdoor activities during the warm season and often get hurt from falls. Fractures in the spine or hip joints are fatal because 20 to 30 percent of the patients die within a year after sustaining the injuries. To prevent fractures, osteoporosis patients should take medicine to increase their bone strength. 약물 치료를 하게 되면 궁극적으로 골밀도가 증가되기 때문에 재골절을 it is also recommendable for elderly people to enhance their balance control by participating in exercise programs. In particular, strong leg and lower body muscles sharply decrease the chances of falls. Two idol girl groups, Sistar and AOA, have simultaneously released new songs and returned to the stage. This and more coming up in today's Showbiz News. Idol girl group Sistar have released a new mini-album for the first time in 10 months, making their bid for a music sensation this summer. Its title track, Shake It, is an exciting dance song, which impresses music fans with its intense brass sound, a retro style, and powerful vocals in the refrain. Girl Group AOA also released their third mini-album with six new songs in various genres. The lead single is Heart Attack, a witty take on a woman's elation upon falling in love at first sight. Its dance choreography notably depicts a dropping heart. The movie Assassination will finally open in movie theaters on July 22nd, after generating a stir with its casting of A-list actors Chen Ji-hun, Ha Jong-woo, and Lee Jong-jae, under the direction of Choi Dong-hoon, director of The High Rollers and Thebes. Veteran, directed by Ryu sung wan and starring actors Hwang Jung-min and Yoo Ah-in, will open on August 5th. Beauty Inside with Han Hyo-ju will be released on August 20th. Memories of the Sword, which stars Lee Byung-hun and Chen do yeon will also open in August, as highly anticipated South Korean movies challenge the dominance of Hollywood blockbusters this summer. Anyan accessories were very popular here in the early 2000s thanks to their purported health-boosting properties. They're drawing the spotlight yet again with bracelets and necklaces made with onions flying off of the shelves. But do they really work? Let's find out right now. Anions are atoms with negatively charged electrons found in the air. Negative ions can be found in large amounts in forests and valleys, which is why they are sometimes nicknamed nature's vitamins. Negative ions have diverse effects on the body, 
음이온은 체내 활성산소를 억제시키므로 항산화 작용을 통해 노화 방지 및 면역력 증강 등을 기대할 수가 있습니다. Consumers can choose from a variety of products containing negative ions such as air purifiers, hair dryers, lamp stands and even underwear. Accessories containing negative ions are especially popular because users can always wear them. Silicone accessories containing anions drew the spotlight first when the Korean national athletes wore them in the Athens Olympic Games. Anion accessories made with new materials such as ceramics are also available these days. 정기석이라는 토르말린 볼에 음이온 세라믹을 섞어서 고러한 소재를 적용한 팔찌입니다. Tourmaline emits negative ions when it's exposed to heat or shocks. That's why accessories made with tourmaline emit negative ions when they come into contact with sweat on the body. They can be used as fashion items as they come in various colors and designs. 일상 색깔이 이뻐서 여성들이 차기 괜찮은 것 같아요. Anion bracelets emit 1,720 negative ions. That's similar to the amount of negative ions you can encounter by strolling in the forest. But consumers should be aware of safety issues involving anion bracelets because they are not certified by an authorized institution. They're classified as a daily supply, not a medical tool. 아직은 의료적으로 확실하게 규격화되지 않은 관계로 인해서 너무 맹신해서 쓰시는 것은 피하시는 것이 좋겠고요. It's also recommended to buy Anion accessories in officially registered stores to ensure safety and quality. If you choose to wear one, make sure you do your research. Now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.